Okay, it's 12.02. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Mauricio. Commissioner Lama. Here. Commissioner Vizcarra. Here. Commissioner Silvisan is running late. Vice Mayor Joseph. Present. Mayor Svechen. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, before we start the presentation, um, I want to just remind everyone this is a workshop. Uh, this is meant for us as a commission as a body to have a discussion so that we don't break sunshine law. So we're not taking any speaker cards, uh, but we do want you to, to hear everything that we're saying. Uh, this is going to be recorded. It's not being streamed live. So I'm asking for my colleagues to please uh, not talk over each other, take turns asking questions so that um, we can have, a, so the public can have a good sense of what it is we asked and then uh, be able to um, come when they are ready to, to ask us questions directly. Um, with that. Mayor, if I could start before we bring up Ian. Thank you. Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the commission, when I first started, you explained to me that public safety was our number one priority. So we immediately began the work of assessing and analyzing and building our police department from the top down. The assessment was done with a three-prong approach. One was with the promotion of Chief Santiago, and then two, we hired our police consultant, Paul O'Connell, and three, we procured the Architects Design Group to do a feasibility study. Over the past year, we've added 13 police officers, which would also mean 13 vehicles and equipment that goes with it. As you know, our police department is currently located on the second floor of the government center. We set about the process of the feasibility study of doing it the right way. We brought to you an agenda item where we sought the best company who are experts in public safety planning and design. We did a full assessment of where we are and where we need to be and what we need to do to best protect our residents and serve the residents and visitors of the city. The Architects Design Group, led by Ian Reeves, studied every aspect of our police department and the current and future needs of the police department. Ian, who's going to be doing the presentation today, is president of the Architects Design Group. His academic and Credentials include a Master of Architecture from the University of Florida and a Bachelor of Arts from the University of New Mexico. Mr. Reeves has dedicated his entire career to solely doing public safety facilities across the United States. Mr. Reeves' extensive experience provides him a unique expertise in implementing design and planning principles. He has a vast understanding of the Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agency standards. Additionally, he's involved with both the International Association of Law Enforcement Planners and the International SEPTED Association. He is also a certified post-disaster facility assessor. He's twice served as a committee member of the Orlando chapter of the American Institute of Architects <clears throat> and he's a frequent speaker for the International Association of Police Chiefs. Additionally, Ian leads a team of experts in this highly specialized field of architecture. He guides the ADG team to produce state-of-the-art facilities. Mr. Reeves also leads ADG's grant writing services. During that process, he helps his clients effectively utilize grant resources and obtain funding for their projects. Notably, he has been successful in helping his clients receive millions of dollars in funding through local, state, and FEMA grants. Ian is a licensed architect in 23 states and has done numerous public safety facilities across these states. So this assessment that we were asked to do also includes space for our lifeguards which as you know are a critical component of our public safety facilities. Currently you may not know that our ocean rescue department is confined to one space on the first floor and they do their roll calls 
in the rear parking lot of our facility. I took some photos of the lockers that I'd like to put up where our ocean rescue currently uses. So I didn't take any photos or provide any photos of the police department for public safety for purposes. But we have approximately 34 lifeguards that use this facility that is confined to an area underneath the first floor parking garage. So where we are now is we need to plan for the future. Our city is not the same city of the past. It's growing, it's changing, it's not getting smaller, it's getting bigger. And we need to figure out where we need to be to protect our residents and visitors. For the first time in many years, thanks to your guidance and direction, we are staffed where we need to be in our police department. We need to plan for the future. You have all shared with me the direction to add to our current police force. And we need to do this with proper planning while being fiscally responsible. We are aware of the budget and we want to plan accordingly and invest in our future. We need to also maintain our operations and exceed our level of service. As you're aware, lawlessness is on the rise and national trends are focusing on police officer training. And currently we have to send our officers out for training, including the gun range, which takes critical officers and our presence out of the city for hours at a time. It's crucial for us to provide a training facility and it's also an important part of retention and recruitment for the future. So now is the time we feel that we need to responsibly plan for the future. We need an adequate home for our police department and we need to know where they're going to be. So we studied four potential sites, the government center, the former Tony Roma's property, the property to the north of us, and the Navarro site. Ian and his team did a thorough, comprehensive analysis of all the sites and they're gonna present their findings to you today. And after that, we need to hear from you about what your individual thoughts are about where our public safety facility will be located. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Good, thanks. Appreciate y'all having us here today. Uh, I'm, I am Ian Reeves. It's uh, pleased to be on your team. With me is Eris Garcia from Wolfburg Alvarez, a local architecture firm here in South Florida that we partnered with to do the analysis for this feasibility report. Um, so as, as Stan said, we've looked at this from a variety of perspectives. Um, we've, my firm's done, I think, a little over 800 public safety facilities in the United States, so, and planning and design. Uh, if we could, is this me? Is this live here? Let's see. We started with a series of priorities that we prepared based on feedback we received at the in beginning of this process. Um, the priorities that we developed collectively included that a new police headquarters had to include adequate space for ocean rescue for the lifeguards. What we saw was somewhat deplorable in terms of how many folks had to work out of there. We've seen, we've seen a lot of spaces like that before. Um, and it makes our job real easier because we're the savior when we come and we get them a, a realistic working environment that they can be proud to come to work to. But um, as Stan indicated, accreditation is very important for law enforcement agencies. It speaks to a level of professionalism in the agency and it protects the, the municipal government agency from frivolous lawsuits because the police department is following design and protocol guidelines and how they interact with the citizens and how the facilities manage the bringing in citizens on a um, daily basis, whether they're there voluntarily or not. And there's protocols built in to protect everybody. Once you bring somebody into a police station involuntarily, you are liable and responsible for their well-being. So accreditation addresses those issues. And as Stan said, I've got a great deal of experience with the accreditation process. One of the other things we wanted to be able to do and the development and planning would be to enhance the services from your E911 PSAP. That's a public safety answering point. That's the term for 911 call center. Um, 
better facilities and better training will afford you all better response times and getting the right people to the right place as quickly as possible. That's a critical component of public safety. And as we know, public safety speaks to quality of life of every community. Um, other conditions that were of importance included maintaining a very strong and positive presence in the community, making sure that crimes of convenience of folks outside the city limits of Sunny House Beach aren't occurring because there's a lack of presence and they feel it's an easy target. So maintaining that presence is very important. Um, likewise, parking is a challenge here. You know, site size, parking garage, uh, public parking are all challenges for the citizens and the staff. And that's, uh, this is an opportunity to address that as an additional component. Um, and then, in my opinion, one of the most important components of our planning process in the last 10 plus years has been to address the uh, challenges that the law enforcement industry is facing in the communities that they serve based on unfortunate events that have occurred. And a lot of those events were very often um, unnecessary, and it was due to a lack of training and a lack of understanding of what they were dealing with. So that's a big part. So the way we manage that is we provide opportunities and training venues within the public safety facilities because training is the most important component in law enforcement that represents the quality of the service that the community is getting from your agency. Whether it's a de-escalation, whether it's a riot because of an event, whether it's dealing now more recently with people with special needs that were, that's a very new training element about dealing with that they haven't really focused on historically. Whether it's dealing with school active shooters, that's a big thing. Um, and the training helps with that. But the second component to those events that are unfortunate is how do you rebuild those relationships with the citizens and the community? So in the planning process, we often, almost always now, are including community engagement spaces to provide venues for citizens groups to be meeting and gathering within a public safety facility, utilizing the same space that the officers work from, not the secured areas, but the public access areas, and being able to build upon that relationship and trust. That's so important. The officers rely on the citizens to provide data and information once an event has occurred so they can help solve the crime in a timely manner. So those opportunities are of critical importance. And rest assured that we've got space like that in the program plan for the new proposed headquarters. Um, and then uh, during the interviews and the one-on-one -on -one briefings with the elected body and talking with the police officers and with the chief and with your administration staff. There's also a desire for enhanced recreational capabilities in the city. And that could, be, that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. That could be swimming pool, that could be tennis courts, that could be passive park, it could just be open green space. So there's, there is a desire for that. And that's not uncommon everywhere we go. So those, those open spaces, are what people are driven to communities for. Education, roadways, and public safety are the three, you know, infrastructure, education, and public safety are the three most compelling arguments of why people are moving from one community to another. And that's, that's what we look at and consider in the planning process, not just with the program development of every space that goes in a proposed facility such as this, but also in a site analysis and site um, candidates of location. So there's a lot of different considerations that are hopefully prioritized accurately and that are utilized in that ob objective evaluation process. Um, so our process then inc incurred a great deal of time interacting with Chief Santiago and his team. Each unit had representatives work directly with us in identifying what they believe their day-to-day -day operational needs are. In our discussions, we focus on what is your existing working environment like? And we try to get them, our efforts really are focused on them to foster developing a mental inventory of their existing working environment. What works, what doesn't, what do they need that they don't have? What could we do to make their job more efficient and their delivery of service on a day-to-day -day operational need? 
And we are very proud that our program and our facilities have never once been referred to as a Taj Mahal because that to us means the citizens and the press believe we unnecessarily spent taxpayers' dollars. So our role as your planning and design consultant, in our opinion, and the way we take it to heart, is to provide your team with the most efficient working environment possible. They have what they need. They're located next to the other units that they have a synergy of workflow with, and or we have security access control provisions and a security zoning plan from the site into the building about how far public can access and then who needs to be next to who for that maximum efficiency of service. They already provide wonderful service. A good design can enhance that, and that's what we strive for. Um, so this process started with a questionnaire. I believe Chief Santiago's team, we probably got 25 different questionnaires back from all the different user groups within the department and within Ocean Rescue. And those are very helpful. And then we talked to them about what they thought they were documenting for us. <coughs> and we talked to them about the several hundred other facilities that we've worked on that have successfully exceeded the expectations. And what if we did this? If we put the plotter next to the logistics and crime analysts and you're not walking to the other side of the department every day, back and forth, back and forth, how would that work for you? And of course, they find that to be very efficient. So those are the discussions and, and the information that we could bring to the table and that was, that was discussed during this whole process. And those discussions are eye-opening eye and enlightening. So every project we learn or hear something new that we never have heard of before. And that's critical because these projects evolve to reflect, every one of them is, is custom designed and programmed to reflect the community in which it will serve. And that talks about the issues that the officers are facing. It talks about your growth demographics. It talks about your seasonal influx. It talks about outsiders coming into the community. And what does that mean? It talks about parking. It talks about traffic. It talks about many different components. Um, so those are the systems that we use in our programming process. Um, likewise, utilizing input garnered from the administration and looking at city-owned properties to try to maintain the minimum investment on land acquisition as possible. So we studied a few of the properties that the city already owned. As Stan said, there were four considerations. Um, those would be our site candidate identification, which included the Tony Roma site, the City Hall, the site just north of us to City Hall between us and the shopping plaza, and then the Navarro property just north of us. Those all four were equally considered objectively utilizing our process. Um, we also had our technology consultant work with the IT folks and with the, with the police department and come up with a preliminary budget assessment of what technology costs would incur for a new proposed headquarters. So we have that cost data captured. Um, then utilizing the site analysis process that Harris and his team at Wolfburg Alvarez provided for us, we looked at zonings and we looked at uh, in, in existing infrastructure. There's the three primary sites that we assessed. So existing infrastructure, including aerial and subsurface utilities, parking, um, accessibility, so we're not having a singular vehicular ingress egress point so we don't have a pinch point of officers trying to leave the facility to respond on a service call um, we also look at expansion capabilities development capabilities are there existing buildings that need to be demolished or the term is raised uh, and disposed of are there development considerations that are outside by a third party are there leases that are still existing all of these conditions are, are assessed um, so going into those, the site one, looking at the old at the Tony Roma site, is by far the very smallest piece. And when we look at the cities and uh, study the city's land development regulatory requirements regarding parking for public and staff, they're pretty they're pretty restrictive, just like every community in the state of Florida. Um, site size, we also have to identify location for a secured central utility plant for emergency generators, fuel tanks, fuel pumps, air conditioning equipment everything that has to be protected in a steel cage from any airborne debris that would be inherent with the hurricane force winds and pressures where you have things flying around. Um, so we have to protect that infrastructure because the state of Florida recognizes this project type as an essential facility, meaning it can't go down during an event, whether that's natural or man-made. So that's of critical importance. Um, so that central utility plant has to be 
as close to the building as possible, preferably, to minimize the extension of the copper runs and the fiber and everything else that's coming in with the communications towers. So ultimately, on, on this site, it was, uh, it was quickly determined that the Tony Roma site could not either accommodate the footprint, the parking, the utility infrastructure for the new stuff for the central utility plant. And it was rather quickly, because of all the cons versus the few pros, was quickly dismissed. It was dismissed on, in such a manner that it did not even merit a cost analysis development because it, we would have been like seven stories or so. It just would have been really difficult for us to make that site work. And we don't believe that would probably be the best way to spend the taxpayers' dollars at Sunny Isles Beach. That there's probably other purposes that that facility could serve that would be publicly accessible and like kind to City Hall if, if perhaps you ever wanted to move the library or anything of that nature. So that might be a, a public um, use function that would be appropriate. Secondly, um, we looked at uh, the site again and on site two, and you know this is the city next to the city hall site. Um, this is just a concept plan. Excuse me, I'm still on Tony Roma. This is a concept where we're going to have to go four to five stories, and you can see there's just no parking, um, and you can see there's two pros. The two pros, let me see, are that only that it's adjacent to city hall with a known function, and that it's on Collins Avenue and provides a good presence. Now, I would attest that those are weak pros, okay? And all the, the, all the other cons that are drive up and quadrupling or tripling the development cost would, would far outweigh that. And that would not be a good consideration in our opinion. And then, so the site two, and please, please ask questions as we go. I would rather talk with you than at you. Uh, this should be a, a dialogue and not a dog and pony show, but. I would be happy to answer any questions as we go as opposed to waiting till the end. That would be better. Um, so the site, and then if we look at the site just north of City Hall, between the City Hall facility and the shopping plaza, um, this site is just, it's not very big. It's um, like, it's a, almost a half an acre, and that's not a great size footprint. Um, what we, that's what, that would be track A, the, the, uh, the part that's on the west side. And track B is another uh, 0 .7, 0, 0 0.7 acres. So we're at a total of um, 2.2 acres, sorry. I should put my glasses on. They only work when you wear them. Um, even this, yeah. pardon? It, yeah, you're looking at the, uh, the property north of Yes, sir. It's right. one and a half. One and a half. One, well, it's, yeah, it's a lot A is point, yeah, it's point four two, and the other one's, existing yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's if you take into account the existing city hall Yes. Yeah, yeah there's just the space okay. between where the little fleet facility is that would have to be displaced, okay? Um, and then when we looked at this, you know, we could do a nice concept that would hold presence along Collins, but it's a sliver. And due to the proximity of the city hall and the shopping center, you have to have a certain distance away from existing property lines and, and existing developments on adjacent properties before you can have windows. So we would also have a very limited uh, inclusion of natural light based on how, how big the footprint would be up against the property lines. And for anyone that's ever worked in an office building that doesn't have a lot of windows, it's, it's not a great place to go every day. Um, one of the other considerations was that there's a third party developer that has development rights to, I believe, 30,000 square feet of, of uh, office space in there um, in any future development. So that would have to be negotiated and discussed, and that would be something I believe the city's legal department would have to be involved with to, to either try to buy out or, or negotiate. Um, and you can see that next to the city hall if they were to develop the property we would i mean the, the shadow casting and everything you can see exactly how close we are to the property um and especially if the development now we've understood that the owner of the shopping plaza does not have a desire to expand upon that development but when you have a piece of property of that value you want the best use and return on that property so in the future that consideration could evolve and if that was a if that was taken up to a multi-story structure you would be in a in a valley 
if we were to look at that. Um, we have a concept that could work. Uh, I don't think it gives you what the city would desire in terms of a working environment, uh, public accessibility, because we can't add any public parking. Uh, we would have to expand the existing city hall garage to include a secured garage for them, um, for, the P for the PD and Ocean Rescue Team. Um, if we did that, one of the considerations would be that you could um, expand the parking and, and allow the congestion in City Hall, other departments to grow into the vacated space. So that, that's kind of a positive. Um, but again, you, you're not gonna be getting any more public parking anywhere and that's a challenge it's already a challenge i've been here on commission nights when this room is completely packed and we're standing in the back for a couple few hours um, there's some good pros and there's some major cons um, and then we looked at the cost data as well this was deemed to be probably our second most realistic development option consideration um, but it's not a close second by any stroke of the imagination so then we looked at the Navarro property, the third site. Now, the Navarro property abuts a residential community, unlike the other two. So that's a consideration. Um, it is by far the largest piece of property the city has to develop within proximity to the government center. That's a very big positive for us. Um, when you look at this property, and there's all these considerations, and we, we, we're, we're zoned business, and commercial we can we can adjust that to make it all what it needs to be but if you look at if you look at this and um, you see the green area which is the frontage on the east part of the property along Collins that's a good sized piece of property it could accommodate what we need there is a, a little out parcel on the northwest corner of a multifamily house or facility that would be ideal to have included but the concept for the development of the proposed police and ocean rescue headquarters could be accomplished without that. It just would make it an easier development or, excuse me, or a expanded development. Um, so we studied the utility infrastructure. One thing to note is that running north-south dead center of the property, there is a underground utility easement. And so while you can park on an easement, you will not be allowed to build on an easement over the utilities. So the development concepts that we prepared um, look like this. So here's, you can see the easement running north-south parallel to Collins. Um, and then there's our utility infrastructure again. And then, so we have a couple different options for this site that we studied. Um, what, what, some other things to consider is not just the central utility plant location that must be secured, but providing secured parking for Ocean Rescue and for the police staff, especially on the police side, because they're coming and going on a 24-hour basis. And the, you know, the, the staff need to be in a secure, safe environment that's well lit and under closed circuit TV monitoring and coverage. So if something occurs, um, unfortunately, one of the gang rituals for passage and initiation is to pull a weapon from a marked police car. And that's, that's a common thing across the country. And if they can have access to it without having hindrance, of security walls and provisions that would be normal for a modern law enforcement facility. All we're doing is making that job easier for them, and we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, so, the the building's about 30, just over 39,000 square feet per the program, and the program includes a detailed assessment of every space needed for each unit within the whole facility, and that's been vetted a couple few times with Chief Santiago and his team. What we do in the program to make it as efficient as possible is we seek out every opportunity for multitask or multi-use space. If the detectives need a training room, patrol needs a briefing room, you know, and we need an emergency operations center as well, we can consolidate these spaces. And instead of having three at 500 or 1,000 square feet, we could have one at 1,200 square feet where they're getting a space that's twice the size of an individual space, yet with a folding wall partition, we can turn it into two smaller spaces and we're saving 50% of the taxpayers' dollars. Those are the opportunities we seek out to make the general program as efficient as possible. So you can see here, this would be a four-story structure along Collins in the blue, uh, the secured parking on the south side and a small public parking component of about 14, 15 spaces on the north side. And in this case, utilizing the piece of property where the old um, 
trailers are from the construction development company, we could put a secured parking garage there that could also have pub additional public parking in the garage, depending on how much parking the city wanted to pr provide to the general community. Yes, ma'am. Why do we need public parking? Where is that coming from? We have a community room that's also a training room in the public access area of the police headquarters. And if we're gonna have a community room that serves up to 40 or 50 people, then we need to provide some public parking. Plus, their most frequent request is public records request in the records department and getting copies of um, citations or, or arrest reports or affidavits. And so the records department is constantly engaging with the citizens as they come and go. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Stevenson, your microphone's not on. Yeah. So just as one development concept, utilizing a secured garage that could provide between, depending on the number of elevated floor decks, we could provide between 150 and 150 parking spaces if deemed necessary. Um, a second one would also include, a, it would be removing the public parking from within the parking garage that would remain secured only for the staff, and then putting a larger, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. And then a larger public parking on the north side of the police headquarters. Um, that would accommodate the, the capacity for the community room and the training room. So if the police department or the city are in a position of, of opportunity to host a multi-jurisdictional or a regional training exercise, those are wonderful opportunities because then you're getting your staff trained for free because you're the host agency. And you're not, you're not incurring costs to send them off-site out of town at you know, four or five at a clip to do that for a two or three day training exercise, which is absolutely common and frequent in the law enforcement industry. So, and then another consideration would be to have public parking on the southwest corner and have an integral secured parking garage structure to the, to the police headquarters. Uh, this would also include, if you look at the sliver of blue along Collins, a liner space, which we would predominantly utilize for the patrol officers that are coming and going, but it would give you a, sh a the facade of an office, of, of a government office building and not look at a parking garage from Collins, which is a nice presence, and I think that's an important consideration. Um, and in this case, the, the secured garage could again maintain the maximum needed or in 34 plus parking spaces for the public. And then based on feedback that we had heard and received during the planning process, the recreational component presents itself as a unique opportunity to utilize the proposed development for the police and ocean rescue headquarters to serve more than one function for the city and the taxpayers. If in fact it's the desire of the elected body in the city to include recreational facilities or elements in this part of town, um, this would be a good site for it. We, we recommend a passive approach to recreational because of the adja adjacent uh, residential neighborhood. Um, but when we looked at this, this, this wasn't part of our scope, um, but we felt it, here, from hearing what people were saying that were decision makers and considerations that were coming from the general public about the need for the resident, uh, recreational, we thought it was appropriate to study it a little bit and see how that could marry up to the proposed development for the headquarters. Um, this, is a, this is indicating a parking structure on the southwest corner, not utilizing anything on the out parcel, um, but we could have parking below and even possibly do an elevated deck for the recreational, which this would show here. Um, we've got a lot of facilities in South Florida, a lot of your condos, a lot of other developments have recreational and, and uh, casual environments on rooftop terraces. And that's not an uncommon thing, even with pools. Um, and so this would, this would be kind of a, a concept that would afford you that with tennis and pickleball and a recreational building with restrooms and parking below. And one of the things that we felt might be a, a positive consideration to the residents of the adjacent neighborhood would be that we've heard from the mayor that a lot of people are cutting through that neighborhood to get to the school at certain hours of the day when the school is opening and closing. And that's, that's a challenge for folks that are older or ch children or dog walkers. And all of those are real considerations and, and concerns. We believe that the presence of the police department may help dissipate that. And that we've seen that quite frequently. If you're doing activities 
that are not inherently positive to the community, like the neighborhood, and you're cutting through, and you may be cutting through at a higher speed. If I was doing that and the police department showed up, I'm not going to be doing that as much, personally. That's just a perspective I have, but I think that's a general perspective amongst people. Um, when we looked at the site and we did our pro and con analysis, we, we've got the full site to work with, which is inherently much, much greater in terms of development consideration and cost reduction than if we had a much tighter site going vertical. Um, we have all the natural light we'd want. There's room for growth. There's op opportunities for the additional recreational component if that's a desire. Um, we could look at different various parking strategies, surface and structured parking, because everything else had to have no nothing but structured parking. Um, and then also the west portion could offer uh, additional future considerations. If, the, if today is not the desire to have a recreational component, that piece of the property on the west side can be left available for future considerations. And that's, that's probably what we would recommend until I understand you all have a parks and recreational master plan for the community in the works. And if you all could tie this into that, there might be a lot of synergy between the, the recreation and the law enforcement and the, public, and the ocean rescue. And being able to develop that together as another government property with multiple amenities for the taxpayers and citizens, I think that's always received as in a positive, positive manner. Um, the only, there's only a couple negatives. Um, the Navarro lease for the, for the current business is not up until the end of 2026. So we could either negotiate a buyout or plan for that development to start after the leases are up. Um, the design for a facility of this nature, complexity and magnitude with 911, with detectives, with everything else, uh, the design's gonna take a minimum of a year. And then when you put it out, it's gonna take another two to three months to procure a selected builder entity to work with the city and your selected architecture engineering team. And then that's going to take them a while to mobilize. So you're looking at a year and a half or so, just in general. So December 2026 will come much sooner than it sounds, is what I'm, I'm suggesting. And then it's just as some reference visuals, these are some facilities that we've taken the liberty of photographing and having received images from other architects of projects they were working on. But you, you can see that rooftop terraces can be very amenable to passive park, to jogging, to whatever you all want, as well as green walls on the side of parking structures to soften that and buffer that from adjacent property uses and owners. So these are just some visuals that we felt were appropriate to share regarding this proposed development option. Now, then we ran our cost data, and the cost data indicates that there's not really a great deal of difference in expense uh, when you pull out the um, cost associated with the municipal parking garage and a one and a half million dollar allowance carried for a recreational component that could be part of that west side of the Navarro property. The Navarro site is the only site studied that could add other program elements to the development pr approach. So um, the second, so we also ran data of three different options for site two and three. And the development option differences, A, B, and C, include the program is identified with current need as 2023, and a 10-year growth model of 2033, and a 20-year growth model of 2043. And the way the program is structured, the 10-year growth model is really a 12 to 15-year growth model because storage rooms and closets and whatnot are sized to be adequate for the minimum size of an office. So they could easily evolve and be repurposed to accommodate future growth in excess of the future growth identified from 10 and 20 years out. So we're trying to maximize how this building could evolve in the future as the manner in which the departments provide their day-to-day -day services evolve and the community continues to grow, mostly in density, but density equates to service calls as well, okay? Um, what we've got here is development option A for each site is to do the 2033 year growth build out at a minimum. 
That way you're not moving in and you're fully occupied. Any planning consultant that proposed the development option that means you were fully occupied the day you moved in is not worth their weight in gold. You need to have future growth or you'll be back in this situation in 10 years or 15 years. And we always work and plan under the adage that none of the buildings should need to be expanded or renovated prior to the original debt service being expired. I mean, that's a 20 to 30 year window. And that's just a good planning process. If you don't plan for the future, these buildings are not inexpensive to start as of today. They're going up every day. And in 10 years, it's gonna be much worse. So we, we would never propose to you all to, propose, to plan to build something in 10 years. That would just be very poor planning and, and whoever would propose that shouldn't even get paid for that. So development option, so development option A has that 10 to 15 year growth window built in. Development option B has the same thing, but also the extra 10 years to reach the year 2043. But that space, that extra space, which isn't significant, it's only about 4,200 square feet, but that extra space is strategically located between the units of the departments that are programmed to need to grow to expand staffing in the future. And it's all correlated back to a staffing study that was conducted. So it's a very logical process of managing and strategizing for future growth. It's where it should be, and until it's absolutely needed, it's storage, it's emergency supplies, it's dorms during hurricane activation modes, it's things of that nature. And if you do it as open space or shelf space, we'll be getting it for 60 cents on the dollar of the construction cost models that we're experiencing today. Okay, and that's a big deal. Yes, sir. Now I see on the um, cons regarding Navarro, mm -hmm. I don't see any mention of the loss of rent. Well, the, the lease is going to be up in 2026. We did not include future lease. But that property could still be leased. It, it could be, yes, sir. And that was and not. How much do we it, get now? A year? You'd have to ask. Yeah. 300,000? Yeah, that could be future projections, true. So that's another consideration. That's a, something that Vice Mayor, we did not have data on, so, yeah. Development option C, so development option B has that 10 to 15 year window of growth already included. Development option C is the full build out if you were to build out for the year 2043 projected growth needs under phase one development. It's our recommendation as your planning team to consider development option B for either site that you all deem appropriate and because that gives you the growth strategically located in the areas identified to need to grow based on the units and the staffing studies, but you're not building it out now. It'll be a future tenant improvement to add a few offices here and there in lieu of doing like a wing of space on the end of the building where then you're looking at a full workforce mobilization from foundation up to roof. And that's a significantly much more in, uh, higher endeavor and cost and activity and more disruption to the surrounding neighborhood as well as to on, ongoing daily operations within the structure itself. In Florida, as we know, uh, horizontal expansion is always much more desirable than vertical expansion because if you pull the roof off, you're affecting everything below and we don't want to do that. So you'd end up putting a lot of extra money into uh, structural slabs for rooftop decks that you could then pull off. But if there's any equipment up there, all of that would need to be modified as well. Um, so strategic, the best strategic plan for growth management is to include it as open or shelf space between the units identified to grow. And you're, again, getting it at 60 cents on the dollar versus a future workforce. Um, one of the things that we also want to point out is that we carried a $4 million value for the municipal parking garage on the southwest side of the Navarro site, if, if that was a desire to uh, help with public parking issues, as well as any other considerations of a res recreational component. And then we also carried a $1.5 million allowance for a consideration of a recreational component. That is a yet to be determined or, or however to be move forward with in the future as you all see fit. So we just carried those numbers. But if you, if you look at option 2B, in comparison to option 3B, option 2B is at just under $41 million, and option 3B with the secured parking garage integral to the 
public, to the public safety building is at just over $43 million. So it's about a two, two and a half million dollar D mark. Um, but you're getting everything integral. You have expansion capabilities um, and you have the site for future additional considerations at the will of the elected body in the city. So that's, that's where we are um, in the feasibility study. And we are here for questions and response to you all as you deem. And we, that's where Th we are. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, Mayor. Um, I, I have just a quick question before everyone starts speaking because I wasn't in the seat when you started this process. <coughs> and when you and I met, I asked this question because ultimately what we hear over and over again is from the residents is we want to see less intensity on Collins. Mm -hmm. So um, why wasn't the gateway center area and park considered after you and i and eris met with stan and susan that very same afternoon we went and toured that property we uh the day that we met they were preparing it for a outdoor event um it's a very nice piece of property every community we have ever had the opportunity to work with has had a very challenging time pulling green space out of the community um we were not the decision-making process of pulling that site. That might be a question for others, um, but I can assure you that <coughs> people come out of the woodwork when green space is on the chopping block for other facilities. It's green space and open space in every community speaks to that, the nature of that environment. And um, it's, it, to me, it slows things down. It's a calming effect just from an urban planning perspective. Um, it's a, the property's sizable. It's got some ingress egress issues um, relative to getting emergency response vehicles in and out. But the reality is, and it's very different for law enforcement, as Chief Santiago will attest, than it is from fire rescue. We predominantly in fire and law enforcement are not dispatching from the facility, um, but we do need good ingress egress capabilities. And with the congestion there, we noticed traffic patterns were, would be difficult. Um, it's, it's just a challenging site. And I think, in our opinion, Eris, you correct me if I'm wrong, we, we, when, when they were setting up for that event, it looked like that was gonna be a special event. There was 100 plus chairs lined up out there and they were putting up the sound systems. It's a, it's, it seems like a pretty cool venue for outdoor events for the city, but that was just an out, outsider's perspective. Um, but again, we weren't the ones that did not choose to You weren't study. asked to consider it? Not at this time. Right, okay, I just, um, okay, so who wants to start? Okay, Vice Mayor, so, you always yes, sir, have yes. a lot to say. So I have another question. Uh, does your firm have any experience with eminent domain? Vice Mayor, domain? I'm sorry, could you speak in some mic? Does your firm have any experience with eminent domain? Yeah, we've had one project in my 30 plus years in Cape Coral for a police headquarters. Um, it was Cape Coral prior to the mortgage debacle with all the banks was the fastest growing community in the nation. They had more building permits, residential building permits being issued than anywhere. And then immediately following that, they had the most unfinished houses in the market available than any other community in America. It went, it went from the top to the bottom rapidly. The property directly across from the city hall was a four block parcel singularly owned by one individual had prepped the property for a residential development. Um, it was cleared, grubbed, and, and you know graded out properly. But that individual was a willing participant. After the economy tanked in eight, nine, ten, he was pleased to unload it, and and the city got it through eminent domain. They initiated the eminent domain, and I believe that may have been at his request. So he got top dollar for it. Um, more than a private sector development team would offer. And it was, as I said, directly across the street from City Hall. And we put 102,500 square foot police, three-story police headquarters there, very large secured parking area, with vehicle evidence processing bays, rolling asset storage, central utility plant. It worked out perfectly for them. Um, but in that case, it was a little bit different. Um, Eminent domain can be a very challenging process, and it needs to be considered for just a series of options that it has to be used for the purpose taken for a public entity. It has to be necessary for development. Um, 
that if you're referring to the northwest corner out parcel, um, that would be a wonderful piece for the city to negotiate an amicable deal with in any way, shape, or form. Whether or not that's possible is outside my knowledge base. Um, some people are willing and some people aren't. If they're not, it could take years and be very challenging. Um, I've seen, we like in, we're, I, last week I was in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, working on their police facility headquarters study. And there's a few private sector businesses right near their city hall. And now we're looking at a couple of land swap options. One of them is a bank and one of them is a church. And the city has properties that they could afford to them that would improve upon their existing capabilities on their campuses um, and put the police department in a location in the community that's more desirable than where some of the other site candidates are located. So again, there's multiple considerations and thoughts that go into that and we're just vetting through that now. Um, they also have a parking problem, Portsmouth. They've got 22,000 residents and on the weekends there's 100,000 people in the city. It's almost like a Mardi Gras. It is a true destination up there. It's it's like a, it's a you know it's a it's a coastal community. It's it's historic. It's beautiful. They've got the bay. You know, it's almost like going to Kinney Bunkport. You know, it's it's really gorgeous. But parking is absolutely at a at a desired maximum need. And so the city's been building parking garages, but they're on the periphery. And one of the sites next to the bank at 145 public parking spaces, they allow people to park in for up to 72 hours and it's predominantly workforce parking. There's workforce parking and workforce housing issues. When communities in Portsmouth, very similar to Sunny Isles Beach, where the residential living expenses are considerably higher than most communities surrounding, the staff from the police department, the staff from Ocean Rescue, and the people that serve the community and the restaurants and stores and the merchant shops, they can't afford to live there, you know? So, that 145 parking spaces. So there's just as, the only reason I bring that up is they have similar considerations, challenges, and interests. And if there's a way to figure out um, a mechanism to negotiate an amicable deal for the out parcel that's cost feasible and makes sense to the city, that's a highly regarded recommendation. Um, if it's not, we can make that development work as proposed. Well, while you were at um, Nav the Navarro property, yes, did sir. you take a look across the street at on the other side of 185th Street, the lots to, to the that south. were there? Or yes, to, to the, the to the, to the north, the south. Oh, the south. Okay, um, not not in the process of the planning for the development concept. Mm -hmm. Is well, that there are properties there, and behind Publix that, uh, that could be obtained through eminent domain? Okay, that would be ideal if if the city was successful. Okay. Okay. Alex? Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, I, I didn't catch it, perhaps, but what option out of the, um, the site options number three, which option did you recommend? 3B. 3B, yes, okay. Sir. We wouldn't recommend that you go ahead and invest funds in future build out for 20 years need growth. We, if option B gives you the space, but you don't build it out internally. You have okay. open space in the building, strategically located in the areas that are de known to need to grow. Mm -hmm. Ian, yes, I apologize. Sorry, he's, he's referring to this page, oh. not the, the financial page. Yeah, I'm referring, uh, I'm referring actually to the layouts. The design. The design. Oh. Do you have a yeah. page number? It's yeah, it's page. Yeah, I'm having a hard time when it's double. Printed, but, uh, yeah, it's well, just site study development three, option, option C. B. C. So site three, option C. C. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. All right. That, yeah, I'll, I'll that just. One, just to answer you, um, Commissioner, yeah. that one affords the development to be realized without including the west side. So that retains um, options for. Future for, consideration for the green for the green plot. Yeah, to, to leave we would it. have a public parking area mm -hmm. on the southwest corner, but we don't we don't need to incur okay. the cost to build a, a structured parking garage. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question because I see with this with this option you have the the blue plot. It says SIBPD Ocean Rescue Community Facility, 
And then the green one says community recreational area. W what is the difference between the community facility and the community recreational the area? The community facility is the inclusion of community engagement spaces within the public safety building. Within the, for the police, let's say. The police, community room. The, yeah. So say okay. the community room off of the public access area was a space similar to this. And homeowners associations, neighborhood watch groups, nonprofits, that's the kind of uses we often see in our community rooms. Um, that are owned by a municipal government agency like the city. Okay. And then they can, we don't usually see them letting people earn money from utilizing the space. It's usually nonprofits and things of that nature. Like, like if you have a, a police benevolent association, homeowners association, neighborhood watch, if the neighborhood adjacent has a, a, a group you know, that helps monitor what's mm -hmm. going on in the community. A lot of neighborhoods have those, so that would be a kind of space that they could utilize okay. and, and be interacting on, on a given daily basis with the staff. All right, very well. Yes, yeah, because my preference from a design standpoint is to keep the community recreational area and any residents uh, separated from, from our police you know, as, as much as possible. You know, regarding e ingress, egress. Yep. Um, so, so for me, for instance, putting the, the, the recreational area with the, uh, with the actual building where the police department is, um, I, I don't think that will, yeah, that's, you know. It's not a recreational area. It's just okay. a community engagement a venue within the building. Understood, yes. understood. Yeah. Yeah. And this concept we like because also, you know, the, gr the, the green passive park space gives us a buffer to the out parcel and the public parking lot, surface lot, um, not a structured garage in this case, could serve that passive park as well as the public parking need for the police headquarters so, at the least cost. And that will be an open space, you will not have a structure That's there. correct. Okay. Under this proposed concept. Correct. Yes, so, sir. Okay, that'll take away from any visual, you know. And it's a softer buffer. Disturbance. Yeah, all right. Yes, sir. So that community uh, room that you're speaking of is similar to what we have here on the first floor. But it also would serve as a training room for the departments. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They would, any community group would typically need to go through the city to reserve the space for a yes. specific no venue. different than what occurs now. Yeah. It's just more space available for the citizens and as a double purpose, as a training exercise space. Right. Um, I have a question uh, for the city manager. Um, gateway, that was about $40 million? $44 million, something like that? A lot of, a lot of I don't remember the exact I cost think that's here. inclusive of land, of, of, of land purchase. Land purchase yeah. as well, yes. Okay. Do we, do we have, um, do you know offhand, I know this is a, how much we spent to purchase each one of those parcels? that we're discussing right now, the Navarro and um, the other pieces? Turnberry and Navarro, and I believe even the roll lot, were all through TDR type of exchange. So it was no dollars? Um, well, with um, Navarro there was, because the TDRs had not been sold, so we had to buy them out, and the TDRs went into our bank, is that right? I'm just trying to get a sense of how much is the total cost, including the, what we paid for and what we potentially um, you know, gave away. So for instance, when this was negotiated, because parts of it were negotiated about, I'd say 2016, the, the corner uh, portion, because at one point, one of the developers wanted to put up an office building there. And so in order to not have that office building, we, we negotiated some TDRs. Um, so I'm, I want to be careful that um, whatever it is we promised the residents at that time, we're not breaking that promise by now saying we want to potentially build a four-story building because if we think about in a government center right now, that's four stories. And just visually thinking about it, how that feels if you're in a residential um, neighborhood, um, especially like now that I see the parking lot up, you know, on paper it seemed like nine stories isn't so bad but it's, it's a monstrosity, it's, it's huge. So we have to kind of consider what was it that we discussed at that time. So I would love to have that information, um, Susan, please, so that we are able to really discuss it. How much did we put out if there was any cash? And uh, at what was the, the selling point 
to to the residents um, if if there was. We'll go back and watch those meetings and see what the discussion was. Well, hopefully it's in the minutes. You don't have to watch the <laughs> minutes are pretty um, basic. Okay, and then. Um, during this process, and I have a lot of questions, and this is meant to be a conversation, right. and I just want to remind all of you in the, in, that are watching now and later, uh, this is not a site plan approval, so we're, we're meant to be discussing it collectively. Um, did you get any input from the neighborhood, from the residents, from, I, there, isn't an, there is no official association, but just from the, the, just the homes? We did not walk the neighborhood and poll. We mm -hmm. were on site three times, and each time we were on site, we talked to some folks walking by, okay. just randomly. Um, one of them was an older lady, I'd say probably mid-60s, just a little older than I am. Um, and another was a younger couple with, with two little doggies. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and another one, I believe, was a mom with a stroller. And so we kind of felt like got a good little sampling. Um, we talked about the police department possibility, and we talked about a, a passive recreation, low scale, and none of them seemed opposed. Um, um, they looked at us a little bit with, about the police department, and they said, how big is 39,000 square feet, but it's over four stories, so it's, it's gonna all be on the east side of the property, and it's, it's just as this development goes. Um, okay. None of them seemed we didn't leave feeling it was they were negative. No, no, no. It's okay. Yeah, I was. I yeah. meant that the neighborhood people walking we, by aren't necessarily yeah. those that are living in the neighborhood. Well, that could be too. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the vice mayor and I live in the neighborhood, so we have okay. a very, uh, uh, I guess, different we, uh, perspective we, than the yeah. rest of the commission. Yeah. Um, and going back to the point about during school pick up and drop off. Um, it's not just that they're, um, and, and the chief could certainly attest to this, and so can the city manager, how many times I have called saying that people are rolling over the stop signs and coming through. Um, it's just the amount of traffic altogether. And so my concern was when, when we discussed this, um, and I'm speaking to my colleagues, I'm not necessarily directing this to you, is just the, the, the direction and the traffic that's coming from Collins um, on 186th Street, but then also on, what is it, 187th? What is the, the, the bus stop? 189th. Um, and how at a certain point of the day, at least two times a day, it's going to be very congested. Mm -hmm. um, and if any of us have been coming off of William Lehman, specifically around 8.30 or around 4 o'clock, you, you know, there, there's a backup there. So that's, a, that's one of the things that was really a worry for me. Um, yeah, we were very cognizant in the site development concept preparation that we would only have vehicular access to the site from the north and from the south. We did nothing from the west. There was no drive lane coming off of, I believe, Atlantic. Um, but the 186th Street would still be open to the public. It's yes. not, yeah, yeah, we, right, we so if there's we cars coming from Collins and they're trying to get through, what I'm saying is, is that I'm visualizing just the cars everywhere oh. with, with what we're seeing with, you know, we're trying to be pedestrian right, right. friendly, so we're trying to get more kids um, uh, walking, biking, and on, on, on yeah. scooters. Um, Commissioner Riscar, did you, I, you haven't said anything yet. I had some questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Okay, so I'm looking at site three, option A. Okay. And I just wanted to ask some questions about the, the variety of parking options that you're showing us here, mm -hmm. as, just as, as reference, right? So on the bottom, the gray area, it says public slash secured garage. So in this scenario, the pink, the, the the pink part that says secured parking, that would be just for the police? That would be for the patrol unit, those that are coming and leaving more frequently. Okay. And this this public slash secured garage, what what what's your vision of that? Like what's included there? One of the considerations that was discussed in the planning process was providing additional public parking in that part of the community whether it was for people, whether it was metered for people going to the beach or whatever, um, we thought that you could access that from, for the secured side from 185th, is that right? Yeah, 185th. And if there was a public area, maybe they could access that from Atlantic. But I, if I was me, uh, if it was my neighborhood, I wouldn't want any vehicular traffic coming in from the west. 
to the site. Okay. I'd want everything from the north and south. I don't think you're going to get a curb cut on Collins. I mean, that'll be challenging. We have mm -hmm. to work with DOT. Um, frankly, it would affect adversely affect the development operation, the development capabilities of that north-south sliver on the east side. So if we could come in from 185th or 6th only, that would be the ideal scenario. Um, I, this is not our preferred site option. No, for, I know it's not the one yeah. you recommended, yes, but I found it interesting that it's surrounded by parking and and that this one said public slash secured. We were trying to find a way to minimize or ma excuse me, maximize the public parking component in this concept. Okay. Um, we, we don't know how realistic that need or desire is from the city, but it was something that was discussed, so we wanted to make sure we vetted it. So, because I, I think in, that's the only place where it says public slash secured, because I was, I, I prefer, like if I, if I lived in, in those homes, I wouldn't want a garage mm -hmm. like being like built right, right there. And so I don't, I don't like where the garage is, is, and I have no sense of direction, but it's, that's west, right? I, I don't like the garage right. on the west. I prefer the, the, like the option C looking one where the garage is connected to, so do we. to, the, yeah. to the station, but I was wondering without compromising our certification or safety or whatever, whether that public slash secured We could would have be. to segregate the two from one another. But We'd can to, they be know. within the structure? Yes, ma'am. We've done several like that. Even the city of uh, Dover, New Hampshire, we're doing one. Lafayette, Indiana, we're doing right now, where you have separate ingress, egress points for the, for the public and the, and, the fire, and the law enforcement. Um, but we have to have blast baffles between the two, so mm. someone can't park a car in there and blow up the garage and take out our fleet. So that's the that's the concern. Like when you start mixing them, I was yeah. wondering whether, whether that's possible, or even if it's something that that we want to think about. But right. I, I was just wondering if it was even an option. And I, I too was thinking like like vice mayor in terms of the loss of revenue from the Navarro. But then if we if you have additional parking that we that we can make revenue from that instead. For, the, for people going to the beach. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that's an option that we I, I think we, I think and that the vice mayor and I probably would be against that. Yes. Uh, sure. Well, if we're, if we're thinking money, if, if money is the concern, I'm just saying that's something that right. no, I, it doesn't, I, it's yeah. just a thought. Yeah, Commissioner, one of the premises of the process that we tried to you stay focused on was avoiding land acquisition costs. Mm -hmm. whether that was through eminent domain or just purchasing additional properties to see how we could maximize the investment without expanding the cost data model. Um, and that was what this was trying to vet for us, yes. And re with regards to the recreational option, um, when you're talking about the, um, as being part of the structures, are, are, are you, Maybe I, I, I want to make sure that I understood. Are you I, suggesting that it's possible that we can have something on the rooftop of the station? Not on the station. Of the, what, think, the garage? If there, if there was a garage, you, you could do that. Okay. But not on the secure garage. And that would be public or that would be for the use of the, of the department? Public. So once again, we're, we're mixing the use of the... the but no. If you look at this concept, the, the, the secure garage is for the public safety component. And the garage... Did we have on, that slide? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It looks different. This is the same garage as this. It's just showing how it could look with some, Give me one like, second. Know, some additional amenities. Oh, this. Amenities. Okay, that's what I was thinking. It was it's stuck. the same. Yeah. Okay. It really, this is. I, we 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 actually. It's site three, option D. This is like the footprint, and with the concept above. When when we show a dash line, that means above. And then if we did a little rendering to it to make it see shadow casting and whatnot, that's what Got the second it. that's what the second visual is for. Okay. Just as a depiction of what the recreation so that's the right size for a tennis court and two pickleball courts. And then a game room with public with restrooms also to support a, a hydration station and whatever. I mean it's just a concept. I understand. Yeah. This wasn't part of our scope. We just thought we would look at it as requested. Right. Because we're not in the design phase. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you don't have so, any, any concerns about the, the mixing of the, the, the with the public use and the police department. There's no mixing on this on this concept. I think I know what you mean. You mean yeah. that they're close next to, to each get other? next to each other, right? 
Is that what you meant? No, that's not. No, I. I, think I so. so I'm I'm just not a visual person. Yes, okay, so I, I need things in paragraphs. So, so okay. So um, this this visual here that you're showing me here, yes, you're, you're saying that this is not actually physically here. It be, it's it's no, part of it's it is exactly physically as here. depicted. Oh, okay, got it. But, but I thought that was like on top of everything something. on the west side is public and recreation, okay. and everything on the east side would be public safety. Okay. Right. Yes. That I understand. Yeah. Okay. Also, Thank let you. me just say, when you speak with neighbors mm -hmm. in Golden Shores, most people cannot visualize what you're telling them. So the answer you receive may not be a correct answer. And we weren't, we weren't even trying to engage them. We had our cameras and we were taking pictures and we were dressed like this. And they were, they were curious what we were looking at. That was the genesis of that. Yeah. They probably thought you were trying to buy it. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, Mayor, it's a desirable me, piece of property yes, please, and a wonderful go ahead. part of town. Yeah. So. I wanted to clarify that throughout this process, what we've, what's happened is, and through studying the site and our individual meetings with you, um, we discovered a number of different concepts and wants. And that is where the recreational component and the public parking garage became part of this. But as we move forward, we asked Ian and his team to relegate it to strictly a police department. So we have eliminated the recreational and the parking garage portion of whatever designs that you're seeing. And what we're asking for direction on is strictly the police department and the attached garage. And that's how we ended up with this. So any future development of what is now the spot and or that related property is something that we're going to discuss going forward. But from this meeting and from these purposes, we're strictly discussing the east parcel that fronts Collins and the possibility of making that our police department. So though you may see other options included here that include recreational space and the parking garage, we're not considering that at this time. We're strictly looking at building and creating a police department and accompanying garage to go with that police department along Collins. Okay. Um, that's why also the pool wasn't um, considered in this, right? Because we talk about a pool, um, so. And the, there's, there's, depending on how the city wants to proceed with mm -hmm. an inclusion mm -hmm. of a recreational component, that could be part of the passive park. It could be in the garage. We've seen great pools in, on top of parking garages. In fact, I have one designed for my house at home. And uh, my structural engineer thinks I'm nuts. But <laughs> I have a very limited piece of property, and uh, I would like to have a pool at my house. It's just going to cost me $65,000 in concrete and steel more than I wanted to pay. Okay. Yeah. Um, in the site number two, you said that if we go with an option, um, the Performing Arts Center and all that was designed back actually in 2014, 15, when we were talking even to put a middle school did, in that did site. Did the commission... Yeah, because I think Commissioner Stuyvesant, you're the only one that ever saw that um, the, the, the site? site plan plan. Did the rest of the commission see the site plan for that? No. Uh, it was it was a significant amount yeah. of money invested in in um, in that parcel to to use it for mixed use. And at Correct. that point, it was a school, but also the auditorium. Yeah, it was going to be the performing arts center, mm -hmm. commercial, school, and office building, uh, office space on the top, uh, private actually. Um, so if, if we want to consider site number two, we don't have to consider it to be only for the police station and also the, the private business. I know they had the first right of refusal, right? Okay. Um, we can consider again the performing arts center, etc. So I think we are limiting ourselves a lot when we put these limitations in the site number two. Okay. Like to be just. Uh, uh, so I don't know. You had access also to that. To that, that'll be something that we can share with him, Mauricio. Yeah. Thank you. So, so I'm sorry. You, you're saying that we can have a police station with a performing arts center there. I'm, I'm trying to understand what you're. I think you need to see the, the, the plans to understand I mean, it because it was multi-story, multi-use. 
um, it would give you a better kind of idea and, of what. And we would have, it will be multi-use, including the, the police department? Yeah, it can. Like we have it right now, basically here in the building. Yeah, potentially it can because it's got. Yeah, but then you'll mix, be mixing. I mean, I don't know. Right? No, the that, way the like way that it was, it was actually two separate entrances. Remember correct. when it was yeah. the school the was going to be on in the back, on the back, and yeah. then on Collins was supposed to be the yeah, to commercial area. You have yeah. to you have to see it. Yeah, um, so you have an idea. Yeah. Yeah, because I think that, and I know that we we discussed this. Um, you have a very big preference for windows. I know. Um, and I get it, but I also kind of maybe intuitively assume that this is not the same as an office space. So the police officers and they're not sitting there in all day, correct? I mean, well, I should ask the chief actually. What am I? Uh, oh, there's you know, the 911 people. Uh, <laughs> because for me, okay, so this is a significant investment. You know, this is a lot of money. So I know that from future looking into things, when you don't have windows in buildings, you have more illness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Physiological aspects of, the, of that nature is not, they, they had to create a special lighting system called circadian lighting for facilities that didn't have windows. And uh, yeah, but that's not, that's not where I was going. The, the, the yeah. design that we had before, it actually is a split building, so you have windows on each side. You could okay. potentially have windows. Um, or, just to answer what you brought up, Commissioner, was when we've been posed with mixed use with private sector and public safety, it's um, a, not a desired combination. Of course. If it was an office building like City Hall, that's easier. But when you have property and evidence and weapons and booking and intake and detention facilities, and it's, it's, a, harder, it's a harder mix yeah, of, of program to make work properly. And we really do need separation between the two. Couldn't it be a separation in the middle, the way that this is yeah, designed? Yeah, with blast baffles and considerations. No, the way that we, the one we were talking about, the design where it literally is just like two yeah. buildings, but I, they just share I a understand. wall. I understand, yeah. The, the issue is, I'm sorry, the prime issue is parking, because you don't want to mix secured parking for a police station with parking that you would require to have for entertainment or retail or offices or, or what have you, because then you presumably would have someone driving into the garage and could blow up the building. The security mm -hmm. issue when you have a police department, you see. That's why in all these schemes, the secured parking is separate from public parking. Right, and you could still have secured parking separate from public parking. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how much program on that sliver we could accommodate of additional use. Um, because not only are we going to have to already expand this city's parking garage, you would have to add parking for all that public venue. And when you have auditorium or what they call assembly space, the parking requirements are significantly higher than a business occupancy by threefold and easy, easily. Um, and so you might have five decks of parking before you start having business or entertainment. So you might end up with a... 10, 15 story sliver building going up right there. Um, but if you get above the, if you get above the park, the shopping plaza, now we got windows. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, again, I, it's I, just a, it's, a, it's a very unusual combination. Now, as the mayor said, I have many times seen buildings in urban areas, New York, Washington, Sacramento, that we've, we've participated in where buildings are adjacent to each other. You have to put in fire ratings in great detail to separate them, but can it be done? Certainly. We can do anything. We can mitigate any uh, forces that need, need to be. All it takes is time and money. Yeah. And, exactly. do, and what we're trying to do is focus on the police component and give you all development concepts that are the most cost feasible that um, we can still say that we've been the guardians of the taxpayers' dollars in the process. That's that's kind of what our firm's philosophy is, is to not unnecessarily make our projects bigger. Um, and when we're focused on the public safety component, we could certainly look at other things as we've tried to with the recreational, um, but that consideration for this development site option was not part of our planning process. Right. Yeah. Also, our problem is um, mitigating having a multi-story building on Collins 
we're trying to get away from that. Okay. So I, I have a question. So obviously we have a big plot of land, almost two acres by, by Navarro, if you take, take into account all of the plots. So right now you're proposing four stories for the uh, police station. So, you know, can we make that two or three stories or three or two stories? I mean, obviously the way you have outlined the actual design, I don't know if there's other probably designs that we could come up with because you have open space, open parking space in one, so maybe if the police station could take a little bit more surface space and then instead of going vertical, maybe make it three stories. I don't know, just so we are cognizant of the neighbors and the, that neighborhood and visually and structurally is not much of an impact to that. Yes, sir. We could easily. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's and that's what this is for, is to vet concepts and ideas and perspectives. Um, we were trying to recognize the encroachment towards the residential by keeping everything on the east on Collins. Could we decrease the number of stories and expand the horizontal footprint? Absolutely. We just can't build over that easement. Co correct. But we okay. could have a bridge on the second level or a walkway on the first that's secured. Um, you know, just out, it, it could all be done. We just have to have agreement on site location, mm -hmm. and budget, then could, yeah. and, and development approach. We could come up with five more concepts just for that consideration easily. I meant, uh, I meant to ask um, how wide is that easement? Uh, let's see. 10 feet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, 10 to 15 at the most, okay. yeah. And it's got quite a bit of stuff in it. So I bet. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a predominant easement, um, utility-wise. So, so I, I think that we, we have to um, engage the, the neighborhood um, before we choose a site. And, and $60 million is a, a lot of money, but um, we, you know, Plus we've you always- have a large uproar. Well, we've always said you have to talk to your neighbors first, and um, and they literally are your neighbors. But <laughs> and my just neighbors. to be clear, without the park municipal garage or the recreational, that development concept three B was at forty three million, not sixty. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just still, for those people. Still a lot of money. Oh, I understand. Uh, <laughs> These are not inexpensive buildings, and one of the educational comments we usually have to make is so people in the general public and and the people we serve understand this building is a 24 hour seven facility and never shuts down. Correct. So the adage is after 12 months, it's already been used three years. So the initial investment in building materials and systems has to be significantly higher or else the building is gonna start showing wear and tear and requiring operational and maintenance costs much higher if we don't pay up front. You can, you, you can pay now or pay later. If you pay now, it's gonna be a lot less than it is over the 50 year life cycle. Uh, yeah. uh, agreed, my point yeah. is is that, I, I, you know, you had said this a, a few times and everyone on this day has said it many times, we wanna be good stewards of the taxpayer dollars. So I wanna make sure that the return on the investment, are we getting 40 million and $60 million worth of, and this is not a question for you, I'm just putting it out there, um, of, of return of service because it, it's 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 big. It's something that it is. I agree. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll just okay. I just want to add something. I mean, I think that you know, looking forward, and if you look at some of the issues that are transpiring in some of these metropolitan areas, and the influx of people that are coming into South Florida, the scope of criminality. You know, they're getting more violent. So I think, you know. It's not a business. I mean, what return? Of, uh, I'm trying to understand what return on investment are you, are you saying? So, okay, if we were to spend between, let's say, 40, let's just say, 50 million dollars. Okay, okay mm -hmm. that's a significant amount of money. Yeah. Uh, right now, we have in our reserves what 112 million, something like that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, w we still have a city that has an expectation of. Uh, a, a certain kind of level of service. We talked yeah. about this. The parks uh, master plan is going to come through. We're going to have to uh, invest a significant amount of money. My point is, is that right now, some of the reasons that we discussed having a, a freestanding police station, um, and I think you brought it up first a couple of years ago, was the, the signage. And I think at the last commission meeting, you said, well, perhaps at first we start with more signage. I'm looking at it from the point of view of Okay, 
right now the space, we don't have an ideal space because there's obviously cons to every single one. Um, I, if we, if we decided to do this, I would be more on the, the side of the, the, the portion that we had already identified at some point to, to build on. Uh, only because I what, I what portion is that? The, the, the north? Adjacent, adjacent to this. There. Uh, north, north of us. Correct. The, or the 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 part the, the Alamo. The former okay, Alamo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Except for the developer said. issue. Yeah. Well, we can. That's something that we can discuss. Uh, it's just for me to put anything um, in that single family uh, neighborhood um, is going to be a hard sell. Um, and but also this the significant amount of, of investment. You know, some of the points that you made was uh, this would increase the response time. What is our current response time, Chief? It would decrease the response. I mean, decrease. Sorry, that's what I meant. I <laughs> we, it, with better training and better facilities within the 911. What? Right. What is our current response time? It depends on the time of day. Five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still that's pretty quick. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Um, You're fortunate you have a very limited service area. <laughs> well, that, but you make a yeah. b good point. We yeah. do have a very limited service area. So, you know, some of the, uh, we, I had asked you before, and I'm not uh, putting you on the spot. I said, you know, if you can find for me, please, a uh, similar kind of um, uh, presentation, to, uh, to a different city, perhaps in South Florida, so we could get a sense of what other cities are doing. Um, and and what kind of money they're spending. I had a very, very brief conversation with Aventura to, to your point about the firing uh, range because I know that our PD goes to Homestead and they indicated they have the same problem. Um, so I said to them, well, would you guys be willing to maybe build something that we can share? You have more space than we have. So uh, I'm just, my, my point, uh, Commissioner Lama, is perhaps there are different ways to tackle um, you know, whatever it is we're trying to fix here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question, because I, I don't know if you ever had this kind of conversation, but um, what if we partner with the county and we build in the unincorporated area in Howlover Park? Is that a, an option? Is something that we could be partnering there? Um, it's just right there, you know? It's, so... Well, that's well, going to hinder what, the response time somewhat. Well, but what, what would you think would be the... Much. Yeah. It's, it's right there, it's our limit. What is gonna and, give a few more seconds? And remember seconds? that, yeah. it, it's not like the police cars are sitting at the police station waiting exactly. to be called upon. Exactly. They're, they're, dri they're driving yeah. around, so I don't, I don't know that We're response gonna have an time impact. is really yeah. an important topic for, for, I don't think it really matters where, where you put the station because the cars are gonna be scattered over our whole two miles. You know, I, I, right. I just don't think that's an issue. If that was a possibility, that would be ideal. That's, but, but I think it should again, be part we, of the conversation. One at a time, because yeah. uh -huh. we need to I think it should be part of the conversation, because there we have the space. It's unincorporated. Um, I, I represent the South Park, so I can see how, like, the also the, the speeding and in, in everything going south, um, because it's 45 uh, there, the speed limit. So um, if is that an option that we can have a conversation and partner with the county? I'll be happy what, to bring What are, what are their limitations yeah. on that area, if you know? Well, one of the, you, you typically want to have your police station law enforcement facility within your jurisdiction. Um, these officers wouldn't have jurisdiction over their own police station. So if something were to happen, an incident at the police station, technically they wouldn't have jurisdiction over that. So you want to try to keep it in with your, your jurisdiction, even if it's close by. Um, because you'll get into issues with, with Miami-Dade County in that regard. We've had clients pose that same question, and they've had challenges spending t local tax dollars on properties not inside the city limits. So it's, well, we yeah. could always incorporate that. <laughs> yeah. That's an option. Uh -huh. We can That's annex it. We can. <laughs> we know? Uh -huh. um, okay. So let me see if I have other questions. Um, well, I guess one of the things that we discussed with the city manager was uh, at one point, I, I believe we decided that that was going to be a place for our teen center. So within this design, is that still a possibility? Because ultimately, uh, that's something that, that everyone has felt very strongly about. How would that work if, if that would work? This provides the possibility, at least the recommended site, of us maintaining this teen center because 
this option that we've chosen is only fronting Collins to the east. And I think, you know, this is the part where I want to push you a little bit because we've studied this now for over a year. And you all have provided a number of different options. And now we're hearing more options. And we need to focus back on the issue, which is the police department. And we need to know it's our recommendation, the recommendation of the consultant, that we further look at developing the site where the Navarro is. So we did not consider any additional sites other than these four. We didn't consider open space or green spaces because we didn't want to utilize any of our existing parks and that would not be our recommendation. But we're to the point where we need to project for the future our needs of the police department. And we all know from society and the way things are going today that this is gonna be a critical issue. So public safety, more important than community facilities or property acquisitions. And this has been the focus and the genesis of this entire study. So now we need to decide, and the reason we haven't done community engagement is because we've not had the direction yet from you that this is in fact the direction that you want to head in. Mm -hmm. So if we have that, then yes, we will, we will absolutely have community engagement. And we would also bring you back some different potential designs of this site, incorporating the things that you've told us today. But we really need that direction today. So I, I go back to Gateway only because of the location. It's, uh, um, and you know, we discussed this and, and regarding the green space, I, I think we are, the, we are known as the city that has the most parks per square mile than anywhere else. And right now, Gateway is primarily being used on Wednesdays for the, for the market. So that green area is actually not being used for anything else. Um, as far as um, you know, being able to play on the grass or whatever, I my concern is. Well, we we, we do have concerts and no no all no. Other I I that, understand yeah. that, but we also have heritage. Um, we have Samson, and if we're saying that we want to really get a police station and invest in a police station, I want to make sure that we are looking at every option. Um, and I know that when we talked about it, it meant that we had to spend more money for you to look at that option, and I'm not in support of spending more money to do anything at this point. Um, I, I just, um, I do not think that the area in Golden Shores is, is a, I would, I would not support that, because I can tell you that from, from the people that I've spoken to, and just I, intuitively, it just feels wrong, um, yes. you know, there's so many things that, that just, uh, you know, just the, the sirens and being so close to, you know, and, and the traffic. There's a lot of things that I just, as, as a person that lives there, as a person that has spoken to obviously a lot of people there, um, you know, we've got a neighbor here in the audience. Um, I don't know, what, what do you think? No, I, I, I agree that uh, the Navarro property is not ideal uh, regarding uh, Golden Shores residents at all. It was brought up to me the other day um, Heritage Park, that Heritage Park is underutilized. They have a garage, and that might be an ideal spot for a police station that that should be looked at. What? If I may just add to that, the garage at Heritage Park, we only have 100 spaces. It is leased out long term to the Ramada Marco Polo, which is required by us. So we cannot take that away. We'd have to build a new garage, but that's totally what's, doable. What's the lease? Did, how long did you say the lease is? Forever, because when we purchase that land, that is the parking for the Ramada Marco Polo. They don't have any on-site parking. Mm -hmm. Can we go so higher we, on that garage? We could not go higher on that garage. We'd have to build a separate garage. It wasn't structurally designed for that. Is okay, what correct. And, uh, to the Ramada, how many? I think they have like 300 spaces in there. Okay. And I just wanted to respond to one thing the mayor said. There won't be sirens. It's not a fire station. The only time a siren would occur from a law enforcement vehicle in Golden Shores would be if there was an event that they were responding to in Golden Shores. They don't, they don't dispatch with fire truck sirens going. 
It's not like that. That's and the difference between the two. I have another question about the parking. We can give to the Ramada under the causeway, right? Where we have right now the, pro uh, the, the public parking, no? No, when we purchase that land, there's a deed restriction agreement. That specific That English. they have okay. that. Okay. We had to build that garage for them. Okay. What's the total amount of parking spaces there? 300. I, I honestly don't All know. All right. I think that that's, I, I would like to know what the total is and how many they have, because I think it's. How many we I have to provide? How many we have provided, I meant. Yeah, no, I know I, that they have the majority of the parking there. We're literally limited to 100 spaces and there would be some legalities involving that because that was an agreement and a deed restriction. So I don't think that that parking garage is usable or a viable option at all. We could use the parking garage for the public parking component mm -hmm. of the police recreation What area. is the deed restriction on there? That it be maintained to be able to use as part of the parking for the Ramada site. Right, so we wouldn't be taking that away from them, Correct. but but the but adding to it is there's no restriction to adding to it. I'd have to check for. Okay. No, I, no. I mean, we own it. We built right. it. We own it. But we have to provide them those. I'm, I'm gonna get. It's a four-story garage. We have one and a quarter. They have the rest. Right. Okay. So. But then, is the proposal to eliminate the heritage park? How many, I don't think we've, to eliminate the whole park, how big is the park? How many square feet is it? Or it's more like acres, rather. I'm not sure. It's we did not consider eliminating any of our park space. If that's something that you want us to look at, then we'd have to go back and look at all of our park space well, and the potential. Do we all agree that Heritage Park is underutilized? I, I agree. It could be redesigned. <laughs> yes, I, the way it is I right now. It yes. Redesigned. Yes. yes. So, yeah. I, I have a toddler. I think I'm the only one here with a toddler. So, that's the part that we use the less. We use the 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 one in the um, in Gateway a lot. Um, in the evenings, it has a lot of people in there. So, um, just like the the other ones, Heritage. I believe. Um, and right now, it's used more like a dog park. It's full of dogs all the time. Not supposed to be. I think the question then we need answered is, are you willing to give up park space for a new police department? Um, I, I would say yes. I would say, I would yes. say no. Okay, why? I would say no. <clears throat> because we have a, a, no matter where you put a new anything, it's, it, it's going to be next to somebody. Right, so if it's not next to Golden Shores, then let's say it's Gateway. Now it's next to Saint Tropez, and if you put it in Heritage, now it's next to um, Ocean. Ocean. Thank you. Like, but well, that's all you know, short-term so, rentals. So it is what it is. But th there's, it's people are, are are still owners. People still have property interests, and people still live there. It's not necessarily all of it. The point is, no matter where you put it, it's going to have an impact on the surrounding area. Agreed. And we shouldn't, uh, you know, I don't think that we need to be prioritizing particular areas. I mean, you know, there's a saying it says, um, you have to break some eggs to make an omelet, right? Plaza of the Americas has been there. We, we have a little bridge, uh, and I always say it's in front of my living room, which it pretty much is. Now I have a bus station, a bus stop. Thanks to F dot now, I have a bus stop in front of my living room, and and that's just part of, of living in a in a in an urban excuse me in an urban in the kind of urban space that we have. Um, I and I I don't know I'm I like having the green space. I like the idea of of redeveloping something that that. Um, that, that you're not taking anything from anybody. And right now we're looking at it as it is and we're not really talking about the, the you know, I know you mentioned in terms of eminent domain, but there may, there's, my expectation is that there's gonna be something proposed for the stuff around Publix eventually. So you have to consider, that, you know, that's not always gonna be uh, uh, what it is. Uh, so to me, based on the on the on on what's been presented, I would favor, cons you know, going forward with exploring developing that site. Maybe not not as high or whatever. I mean, I don't know. But um, to me, it makes sense that that's where you can have the best facility, 
for heightened safety for everyone, not because it serves everyone. So if we're gonna survey, of course you wanna survey the people who may be most impacted, but that's everybody's tax dollars that are going there, not just a particular neighborhood. And how does everybody feel? Where does everybody think that that would be the best uh, place? Jennifer. And from the options I'm hearing, okay. I'm, I'm, it, I'm not an expert, but I'm here. I'm listening. I'm trying to listen to the wait, experts. Wait, wait, wait. One like second. Let me just because I want to make sure I didn't forget. To your point about taking something away, I agree with you. But that's why I asked, what is it that we promised our residents when we bought that space? And if we promised that we were not going to build on it, are we breaking that promise? And I think we need to have a little bit more historical information. Um, the reason I like the heritage, and then please go go ahead, is there's more space, so you're not necessarily going to be backed to, you're not gonna be backing into Ocean Reserve. Uh, you could have a significant amount of space between whatever it is you build there and Ocean Reserve, uh, much more so than, right. than here. I uh, could also argue that we promised a park where Heritage is now a park, and then we would be taking that away, then you're breaking that promise. So you're, you're gonna, if we're gonna do something, it's, we're, we're gonna have to make a decision. And Absolutely. Not everybody is, something is obviously gonna, if, if we decide to do something, something is gonna change. You, whether you call it a broken promise or, or not, it's a change. Well, it can, be, it can be an opportunity too, because why if we finally re develop under the causeway and we put there the playground, we put there the, um, the track system, etc., and instead of taking something from them, we are adding them a lot of other things that they don't have right now in heritage, and we consider heritage for the police station. I mean, that's the biggest area that we have, and, and it's being, that is really being underutilized, well, I you think know, under the causeway. I, I think that's a different and more balanced conversation because you're not taking your but that's not our land correct exactly that, that's not ours to give you know so but, so, but that's that a more balanced develop. conversation wait, 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 one, like one at a time because we uh, I just want to add that you made a good point because you can reconfigure Heritage Park because I do agree with you there's a large portion of it that just is not used because technically you're not allowed to bike there you're not allowed to to uh, dogs. you're not allowed to have dogs there so you know we do have to you know kind of talk that through as well. What did you want to say, Commissioner Lama? So I, I think that we all can agree that we need an independent police station building. Uh, the question is where right now? Um, ideally for me, you know, if we're being conscious of not building a police station next to residences, whether it is homes, houses, or buildings, then the, next, the, the, the best plot would be this one to the north of us, the adjacent part uh, to the north of us. The issue is the 30,000 square feet that the developer uh, has a right to there. Um, that's a hurdle, you know. I don't know if that's a hurdle that we could overcome if we do decide to build it there. Maybe we could explore that route. If not, you know, my opinion is to be cognizant, because if, if you look at other parts of the city, it's gonna be surrounded by residences. This is the only part where we have a shopping plaza, you know, that's, that's next to that area. And then to the back, yeah, we have some, we do have apartment buildings, you know, that are, you know, not, not that high, not many stories, um, but it'll be part of the area where the government center is, like many other uh, cities have it. So we have a big hurdle there. To me, that will be ideal. You will not be impacting residents as much. And then if not, whatever we choose, whether it's Heritage Park, you have a lot of buildings there, you know, and you, you also have homes next to it. You have your own neighborhood there. So. Um, but separated by William Lehman Bridge. I mean, look, I, I'm the closest yeah, to of, it, so yeah. I, would pro I would be the, the first yeah, person it'll be to be right against there. it. Yeah, it'll be closer to you than if we put it by Navarro. Yeah, I agree. So, so, it's closer yeah, to us. Yeah, but it will not be in the city. We'll be, <laughs> we won't have a police station in the city. What, what is, yeah. uh, because part of this conversation is having to rezone, and I think that, that speaks to your point, Commissioner Riscar, rezoning does ultimately mean that you're, you're taking something away or, or changing what had been there. What is Heritage zoned at? Right now, I would defer to Amy, but I believe it's um, 
Recreation it, open space. It is. Heritage is Park Repre Re PROS, yes. Recreation open space. Recreation open space. For okay. Heritage. Mm -hmm. um, the Navarro site is currently commercial. The, um, the Turnberry Sales Center, we recently had a change for to make it community facility. Right. It's community facility. And while I have you. <laughs> I misspoke. Amy indicated that it's community facilities. Okay. And Better. we we have um, 358 parking spaces at Heritage Garage. And there's also a requirement. In total? Yes, in total. And 300 are for the Ramada? No, that would make about 258, 260 for Ramada. But there is a number, right, for them. That's what we have to give them. Yes. So as long as we are honoring that number? Correct. OK, we're good. And then um, just another issue to consider is that as our population grows, um, we do have a requirement in our comp plan to have a certain number of acres of park yeah, for our population. I so. was going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I have a question. So the, the agreement we have with the developer for this plot of land for the 30,000 square feet of office space, that is if we build a mixed use building, correct? I mean, we're talking about police station uh, here. I, this is a no. A I believe if we work to develop it at all, we had to give them thirty thousand, and it was any, the any type of even the, the police station where obviously top, you don't want to have it was the top yeah. floor. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it was the top floor. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You don't want office space at the top floor of a police well, station. Well, uh, again, <laughs> I think that you sense. would obviously, but you know, we, but I think it's important for you to look at at that uh, right. at that site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if you it's could, very somebody could send it to me, please. It's, it's, it's very share. big. You, yeah, yeah. you can't. You need All to right. get it like on a. On okay. A if somebody could. USB or whatever. Hand it to me. <laughs> um, okay. And then you get into the issue of trade-offs. We don't want to go there even. Well, okay. So, <laughs> the city manager left. <laughs> they have the right to first refusal. I mean, if they say no, that's it. No, so. that's, yeah. That's really bad. Kind of. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think they have the option to refuse. Well, Not them, the, the developer. My recollection, this is from 2016, obviously we weren't here, but from reviewing the documents, um, was that they have 120 days, I believe, from once they're given notice to, yes, either accept it or not. Okay. And what was, do you, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but what if they do not accept it, what does that mean? We have to pay them or, I guess we need to find that out. What, yeah. what, what, what do we have to do in order for them to release that 30,000 yeah. square feet? We'll have to review those documents, okay. those historical documents, and see what we can gather. Okay. No, I don't think we have to give it. All right. So, are there other questions? I know. When, when we looked up the Navarro site, the Navarro site excluded of the parking structure is right around 2.8 acres. Not Navarro, I'm sorry, Heritage Park. What the one we're talking about? Heritage. It's almost three acres. It's two point eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heritage only two point eight. Outside of the garage. Oh, outside of the garage. Okay. So you'd have to add a garage, the police headquarters, and then you have green space requirement too. So. And how much was the the acreage that we're talking about here with these three? You mean, you mean at Navarro is a one point eight five? The, the the three parcels, the Navarro, one, the one corner, and, and the, the L. Well, hold yeah. on, tell you right now. That's 1.85. How much? 1.85. 1 1.8. So 1.85. So and the other one's 2.8. You said. 2.8. So yes, it's 2. an acre difference. Okay. That's a big difference. It's 43,560 square feet different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, or a little bit less. So when are we getting the uh, garage, the right? parks master plan done? I think that that has to be a big part of this conversation. So they are by. Contract required to be finished in September, with a final report to you in September. Was in August? Was it was September because we didn't have an August meeting. We're going to see if they can move it up a little bit because we now have an August meeting. That but would be good. Uh, by contract, it's September. Okay. All right. I know that you want direction <laughs> from us. I think that we need more information. I think that um, the commission needs to see that this, the plans that were that we paid a significant amount of money to develop for the adjacent um, lot. Um, and I'd like to get more information about heritage. Heritage and also anything that's possible at Hollover. Close, be close. Also anything that's possible at Hollover. Right. 
Well, what's the specific? No, but, but the, Holover, uh, Holover the attorney just said, said that, that, that we, we wouldn't have, have no, jurisdiction well, over no our own department. There's a possibility for annexation. It, let's just so if that say were the pie case. in the sky, okay? You know, what does that mean? Is that even is it even possible? Because I understand part of that is uh, protected. So I don't. My question. I think the question is. Let's just say that the Miami-Dade County decided you can have it. Uh, you can annex it. For that Could we purpose. even build something, or is it protected? Is it protected land? I would also like to add that if we want to be considerate also to, to keep um, thinking about the Navarro area and perhaps looking at a different type of design that does not visually impact that area too much. I mean, it's, it's pretty big acreage there. So, you know, if we go two stories perhaps, we could make it work. You know, just keep that in mind. I, I just don't want us to kind of uh, omit that option either. I mean, there's always ways to, you know, take a look at that land and see what other ideas we could come up with for the police station there. Uh, I personally don't think that the noise would be an issue there, um, like he said. I mean, I, I hear the police from my building, I live in the Winston Towers, and they, they come out here, they go to the intercoastal most of the times, and by the time they turn on their you know, sirens, I mean, it just echoes all over the city. So um, we're a dense city. I mean, the only option that we have where we would not be impacting anybody will be this plot of land next to us because we already have the p police station here, you know? So um, maybe we have to talk to the neighbors in the back of, of us. I, I don't think they have um, any impact from our police being here. Well, if I can just say that attached to the um, Navarro, there's a liquor store. I'd like to know how much business they actually do because you have all of the high rises, all, you know, all of the communities around Navarro that um, would, it would be a disaster to lose that uh, property for, uh, you know, that's used now for retail. It would be a disaster for, for who I'm No, talking. a lot of people use go to Navarro and also the liquor store, I believe. Yeah, but Navarro is sooner or later, so whether we want it or be not, it's not going to exist anymore. There'll be another store that comes in. I um, mean, not a dollar store, but something, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, another, that's another conversation. I, or yeah. CVS could renew the lease. I, I would um, like to hear from Chief Santiago if yes, you that would, would like be, to. That, yes. Thank you. That would yeah. be great. And just if it will be something for you to consider the option about all over. And I'm okay if you say no, okay? It won't, <coughs> it won't hurt me, okay? So. Chief, so. let me, before you, yeah, before you say your piece, uh, I'm gonna say that all over is not an option. It's not a viable option. It's a county-owned property, and I don't think there's any opportunities to annex it. We can look at that, but it would be, as the city attorney said, outside our span of control and our jurisdiction. So I don't consider that to be a viable, viable option going forward. Chief. I agree with the city manager. Hallover is not a viable option. Um, we're going to be outside of our city, not even in our city. Um, think about where we can build in Hallover. We're going to be way further south. Mm -hmm. um, we're, so, I mean, it's just we're going to be basically a station in the middle of Hallover, which I think this, it's not the right um, way to spend our tax dollars. So. How, um, you had mentioned um, <laughs> that you were, the, the projections, I forgot, it's I think the second page. Can you share that with us, the, the projections, because it's blank. I know you don't have it in front of you right now, but it's something that we can. The projections for? Uh, it was this sheet, the process that has the organizational. The growth projections? The yeah, the, the staff, the agency function, relationship, like th that sort of thing just to get a better understanding of what we're, you know, thinking at. Because right now, this is the kind of numbers that I'm looking at. You know, we have about 60 officers and we're looking at $60 million. So I'm thinking, this is a lot. So what are we talking about in the future? Are we talking about, are we gonna be adding, you know, 50 more officers? What, what, I'd like to just get those projections because we don't have that information. Our projection for next year, the total personnel for the police and ocean rescue is 114 personnel. That's for next year. Okay. And how many do we have now? We are. I'm sorry. 
approximately 108. Yes. And you and you're projecting how much? 114 for next year oh, total. Okay. And that that includes part time. That's full time and part time. Okay. All right. And, and Mayor, just to be clear, the 39,000 square feet and change for, for development option B on either site two or three includes the growth correlated to the staffing study for the year 2043. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and the way it's programmed, again, it's programmed to evolve easily and have spaces be able to be repurposed as the needs of the departments <coughs> continue to evolve. So, um, <coughs> city manager, I have a question. It, regardless of what we decide, it would take at least a year to um, design this. In the meantime, how quickly can we put up better signage on this building so that we can affect things immediately um, and, and, and really let people know that our PD is here? Because I know this was something that came up at least a, a year ago. I think at least. At least a year ago. Um, yes, we can work on that shortly. Um, and then the other, and I'm asking my colleagues how you feel about this. I don't know if you've ever toured um, the area that was discussed where the uh, lifeguards, uh, ocean, ocean rescue, sorry. Um, if you take a look, there's a lot that could be potentially renovated right now and cleared out um, to make it a little bit more livable for them. Uh, is that a possibility? Do you know what I mean? Am I making myself clear? You are. Okay. Um, where their current lockers are is a narrow hallway. Um, really but I'm just saying that area, plus we have the, the area at Heritage that has a lot of just things that could be thrown out uh, and potentially used. Could that be used potentially for the Ocean Rescue? To move Ocean Rescue to Heritage Park, like their entire operation, or? Or whatever it is that they are, like what's taking up a lot of space down, um, over on the first floor. It's, it's their locker area, which needs the to be locker near the- locker area is the, the most vital area. And the, and the fact that they have no place to have like their own roll call or anything like that. They have like no indoor space. So they come in, they have lockers, and they go out into. Um, what is the square the footage garage. in there? Do you know? I don't. Audra, do you have an idea? Square footage. No, they definitely of, need a space. I'm saying, for, uh, my, my point is, is that it's going to take at least a year to even get to a design. So, what could we do immediately to make their life better? So that they're. We'll look it up. Okay. What options we have? Yes. All right. Also, as far as heritage, I know, um, I've noticed recently there are a lot of Peaks, bars. Peaks. There are a lot of bars that are being removed from the from the fence at Heritage. What that bars? Just uh, through vandalism. Yes, we're we were made aware and are mm -hmm. working on replacing those. Right. Which bars are which bars? The picket the pickets in the fence right. that surrounds the park. Yeah. So kids are going through with ideas of vandalizing other things. Those so, steel or iron yeah. things are getting... They're aluminum, but yes. Right. <laughs> yeah, so... Okay, you know, all right. It's well, not steel, but it's... They're it's cut, not easy cuttable. to take out. Well, they cut them. Okay. Do we have cameras there? We do, but there's also landscaping around okay. there. I think it's really hard to see, but we'll all go right. look into that. Other comments, questions? So, None for me. Can we get some more information, and then I, I hate to say this, potentially schedule another workshop? Yes, and just so I'm clear on what we're looking at, you want us to look at Heritage Park, the property next door. Share the, the site plan yes. that we had. Share that site plan and then the potential of Navarro, possibly some different options that are less in height, uh, and then some signage for the police department. For me, I don't know about the mayor, but Navarro is, um, is off. From, uh, I from agree. Me. I I would not support that option at all. Even if it's even if it was one, building. Even yeah. if it was one story. No, I wouldn't want to negate the rent. You wouldn't um, want to what? To do lose away with lose the, the, the rent. future lose rental. The rent. Exactly. The that, revenue. That property, not even, the city needs Not the, even in exchange for public safety? Cities always need revenue. No. 
and public safety is well if there's another if there's another space yeah. like you said yeah. you're you're open to this adjacent space i'm just saying well. that we need to obviously we i mean the ideal space would be the one next door but obviously we have that uh, issue with the developers rights um but yeah let's look at all options i'm just saying be open the way you're telling me be open to looking at different options for navarro i'm being open to looking at different options other places so I as, asked for the same okay, thing. Okay, as long as it's not going to cost us any more money to look at other options, then I, I support that. Um, but if I agree with the vice mayor that we need to keep a, a revenue stream wherever we can because if we want to continue paying for these sort of projects, we need to have revenue to be able to pay for this. And certainly I don't think anyone means to at the expense of, of public safety. I, I, I just believe that we have to really understand long term what this means um, and I'm going to keep an open mind as far as the sign I think we're all in agreement so we got one thing <laughs> okay good okay is there anything else that anybody no all right and before we go I just want to again say for for the public here uh, as, as you can see uh, we we can't have these discussions uh, uh, outside of an open meeting and so that's why we have to do it like this. We haven't voted on anything and we welcome feedback from whomever is here but also um, f from those that are going to be hearing this later on because this is recorded because we do need to know what um, our residents want. This is not done in a vacuum and certainly something that's being planned for the t 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, we need to hear a lot of uh, feedback. Okay, so with that, uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.